Uh, we won't have an opening statement, so we're going to hop right into questions for Darren. So uh, go ahead. Everyone should be available to ask. Darren, I have uh, three questions, and then th that's it for me. First, what's on your whiteboard over your right shoulder this time? Second, uh, what advice or what have you told uh, Stephen Glass that you want to see from him and the team in training right now? And third, I know you don't talk about players that aren't under contract, but does the team have enough money under its cap that it could pursue a player of quality, a potential starter? Thanks, Doug. You're a, you're a very shadowy figure in my uh, gallery view here. You look like you're in witness protection. Um, first one, so it's a bit of a controversial one on the board. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's ranking the Jane Austen novels in order. Um, and I have Emma at top, so big dispute with me and my wife, who's only a PhD in English literature from Cambridge, who thinks Pride and Prejudice is better. It absolutely isn't. You know, Emma's a flawed heroine. So, you know, that's what someone you can relate to. You know, Liz Bennett's just boring, if you ask me. But anyway, that's the that's the list behind me. Um, yeah, look, I mean, with our salary cap, Doug, on your third question, um, you know, we have got potential space. There's always ways that you can be creative. Um, but it is difficult, as you know, in a salary cap environment to to be um, changing players during a season. So I think with a little bit of ingenuity, we might be able to conjure something up, but it's difficult. And then forgive me your second question. Oh, Stephen Glass. Yeah, so I mean, look, with Stephen, I mean, first things for us, I think, you know, we're very fortunate that Stephen was doing our USL team, as you know, since uh, 2019. Before that, he was with the academy. You know, Stephen's uh, you know, a pro, played the game at the highest level, played at Newcastle. Well, I say highest level, Tony Annan will kill me for that, but it was only Newcastle, but it was when Newcastle used to be good. So, you know, he has played at a decent level. You know, managers like Bobby Robson. He actually was Hibernian when Tony Mowbray was manager. Tony Mowbray was a manager that managed when I was at West Bromwich Albion, a really good guy. Um, you know, so Stephen is, is a player that's played at the highest level, played with under some good managers. Uh, you know, knows Atlanta United, knows the sort of the style and the philosophy since we started the club that, that we would like. So I think, you know, for me, to have that safe pair of hands there available on an interim basis while we carry out our search for the permanent head coach is, you know, is a blessing for us. We've got somebody who can motivate the guys, re-energize them, get them out there. You know, now we've got, you know, we don't know exactly when the league's going to start, but we've got a number of weeks to be able to almost do another mini pre-season as we go into that second half of the season. So, you know, I've got no doubt that Stephen, along with, um, you know, Rob Valentino, who's still here, who's worked really well with the players and, and is someone that, you know, he has the respect of, of the first team squad, that that's a great, you know, a group and a safe pair of hands while we carry out the search. And what it means on the search is we don't have to just, you know, we don't have to rush it. We don't have to just take whoever's available this minute. You know, we're not in a situation uh, for a number of reasons, partly because of the, the pandemic situation as well, um, where, you know, we've got a game in seven days time and it's a must that we have a permanent manager here. We've got to take our time, make sure that we, um, you know, get the right person in to lead the club going forward on a permanent basis. Uh, and that's what we'll look to do. Hey, Darren, hey, Darren for, a, uh, for, a, for a head coach or manager who had led you to the Campionis Cup title, and the U.S. Open Cup title, when did you lose confidence in Frank? Hi, Zach. Yeah, look, I mean, look, first thing is football, like anything in life, it's, um, it's a dynamic situation. So, you know, it's never binary. You can never sort of, you know, things change and evolve all the time. And I think, you know, the first thing to say with Frank is, you know, when you look back to the season after we'd won MLS Cup, you know, for us to have won the two trophies we did, um, you know, the Campionis Cup was a cracking game at Mercedes-Benz Stadium against Club America. And I think, you know, it was a game that, that we'll look back on in terms of the history of the league, where, you know, it was an exciting, passionate atmosphere and an MLS club beat um, a Liga MX club in a match that both teams were clearly wanting to win. And I think it was a, you know, it was a statement for the league at that stage that we want to compete with Liga MX. So, you know, that was fantastic. We obviously followed that up later that month with the, the cup win against um, Minnesota. And then, of course, I mean, <laughs> in the playoffs, I mean, the Toronto game, I thought we played a fantastic game there. And Joseph scores a penalty. We go 2-0 up after about 10 minutes. And, you know, even then it was two sort of 
really good goal scored by uh, Toronto to win that match. And honestly, I think we play that game 10 times, we win it nine times. And, you know, we'd have been hosting MLS Cup for the second consecutive year. So, you know, that I think is a backdrop. And then the bit that always surprises me, you look at the history of every MLS team that's defending champions. With 58 points, we got the most points in 25 years in the history of the league. So think of those back-to-back LA Galaxy teams with Robbie Keane, with David Beckham, with Landon Donovan. I think they had 53 and 54 points. You know, the Toronto team that was so good in 2017, I think they had something like 36 points their following season. So, you know, to achieve that in a in a year after the MLS Cup is, you know, an impressive achievement. But the reality is it's a journey and we're always looking at the moment. And, you know, for me, um, it was really about direction of travel. And, you know, we had that chat last Friday after the, you know, the MLS is back tournament. Um, and it was clear from, you know, from my perspective that the signs were there that from a direction of travel, it was time to make the change. And look, I think it's not something that was done lightly. Um, you know, it's a difficult decision to, to make a decision like we did, but, you know, we've got to make those tough decisions. Um, and, and part of it is, Zach, and I'm sort of getting a bit philosophical now on the, on the answer, um, you know, we set ourselves to a high standard. So I was going to share with you, uh, we had the lunch gets brought here and I got my fortune cookie today. So the fortune cookie said, expect great things and great things will come. And actually, I don't quite believe in that. I think Bill Nicholson said it better. And those who don't know, Bill Nicholson was a legendary manager of Spurs. And, you know, it's a quote for me that, that you know, I, I like as, you know, as I go through life. And, and what he said was, it's better to fail aiming high than to succeed aiming low. I'm going to paraphrase him now and say, Atlanta United, we've set our sights very high. So high, in fact, that even failure will have in it an echo of glory. And so, look, what we're trying to do at Atlanta United is hard. You know, we're a new team, still relatively new three years in. We want to win trophies, but we also want to play a way that is attacking, on the front foot, exciting. And look, that's difficult. I think it's even more difficult in Major League Soccer because, as you guys know, you have a playoff at the end of the season. And even Tata, to some extent, was, uh, was a little bit more pragmatic the year we won the MLS Cup in how he approached that that um, that knockout stages. So what we're trying to do is we want to be winning games, we want to be winning trophies, um, but we also want to be doing it in a way and a style that is Atlanta United. Um, that is, when you watch them, you know you're going to be excited watching those games. You're going to see a team that's on the front foot. And that's a hard, hard and a very high bar, but that's the bar we've set ourselves. And I think, you know, that for us is, is what we want to do going forwards. We want to strive to do both of that, win trophies, and play really good football as well. And that's tough to do, but that's the bar we're going to set ourselves. Uh, and in doing that, we're going to have to make tough decisions. We're not always going to get it right, but we want to be trying to do it so that when we do fail, at least we feel we have that echo of glory. Hey, Darren, Darren, uh, Darren you're, making me, you're making me tear up here a little bit with, with the uh, spur scarf in the background. Uh, <laughs> I, I heard you on 92.9 The Game the other day, and you were talking about how unique uh, opportunity it was to actually be kind of on the ground level, so to speak, and be able to see the team you know, within, you know, up close with your own eyes. What did you learn from from just seeing the team with that proximity? Yeah, look, it was really unusual, Joe, because, um, it, you know, sometimes you'll go on on road trips, sometimes you'll go, obviously, pre-season, but, but this was that unique circumstance where we're all on the same floor. We're all together, you know, 24-7, literally, you know, at the time when we had the positives before the Red Bull game, we're all, you know, in our rooms isolating, you um, for that 36 hours before it. So, you know, it, it just gave a little bit of an insight that you clearly wouldn't get normally. Um, we were there just over the, the three week period and, you know, everything from just, you know, training through to, you know, just the feeling in breakfast, you know, you just were around everybody and it just, um, you know, gave a, you know, it just gave an insight into to where we were as a club. And I think, you know, that, you know, shows you from a timing perspective, it just, just helps in terms of, you know, having that chat and realizing that it was a time that, that it might be better if we mutually parted ways. I think I heard Felipe and Tom. Tom, you want to go ahead there? So you're okay. uh, Sure. Uh, actually, Felipe, you're local if you want to go first. Okay, Tom, thank you. Thank you for that, dude. Um, Darren, so please let me know if this is accurate. I felt like when, when Tata was brought in, it's, it's a gigantic hire. It turns out great for the club, for the league. Uh, for the sport in this country. And, and clearly there was an, an objective to win right away, 
to, 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 pr to prepare a team to win, even MLS Cup in 2017, that was the goal. Uh, when, when Frank is hired, even in his introductory press conference, it seemed like there was a, a little bit more talk about long-term vision, um, academy development, you know, the, the, the pipeline, if, if you will. Is that accurate? And will that perhaps, ch you know, a change your approach when you're looking for this next coach, considering what, what the club wants to be right away? Yeah, I believe. Yeah, great question. I mean, look, I think um, you know, when I, I, I spoke about the sort of two, uh, two, you know, the paradox almost of, you know, trying to play that attractive football and winning, there's also a number of factors underneath that. You know, we want to be having uh, young homegrown talent coming through. Now, part of that is essential in a salary cap environment. I mean, without getting too technical, you know, this isn't like any other league. You know, it's not as simple as, right, we've won the cup. And that's why I put that stat up about the number of points we got, because I think people forget, you know, you can't just keep the squad, the band together and just keep rocking on. You know, it just doesn't work like that because we have this tight salary cap. There has to be that element of, um, of continuing to evolve the squad. So absolutely, you know, youth development is an important part of that. I think, you know, on any coach that we have, there's a number of factors that goes into it. And I think, you know, there'll be different areas. Every coach, you know, in the world has different strengths and uh, perhaps other areas that they're not quite so strong on. You know, I think Tata was, you know, an unbelievable coach for us. Uh, I think, you know, one thing that I'd say with Frank that, you know, you give to his credit is, is a Miles Robinson, you know, right from day one, he gave Miles a chance and, you know, Miles is going to be a player for the future for the American national team. And, and, you know, that was fat Frank who has a, you know, a background of developing young talent and he played him from the start wasn't afraid to do that. So everyone's got strengths and weaknesses. I think that, um, I think for us as a club, and I say it's dynamic, it's like a river, it doesn't stop. Where we are now at this moment, and I think, you know, you know, I, I know you've spoken about it, and I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head as well. It's about, you know, we've got to take our time now, and it's about where we are now, what we've learned going forwards. We're always evolving, we're always learning. We're never going to get everything perfect, but, but who's the next best fit for us going forwards? And I think, you know, look, we're on the scene now, we're established. We have the most amazing fan base. You know, it's crazy. Again, I still pinch myself to think, you know, we're top 20 in the world in, in attendance. And, you know, that's something where we, we aspire to that. And we, we delivered, but now we've got to deliver, I think, on that, that sort of philosophy and style of play. And it's not, a, it's not a tactics necessarily. It's not even a, you know, it's not a formation. It's really a state of mind. And I think that's probably the, the biggest thing we're looking at is this has to be someone uh, and, and again, I've said it like from the start, rather win a game 4-3 than 1-0. Now, I still want to win the game. So it's not I'd rather, you know, lose a game 4-3 than win 1-0. We want to win. But if we're going to do it, let's have some fun and let's give it a go doing it. And, and that's not really, um, you know, in, in some sense, that's not really a tactical. It's more a state of mind. I think that's probably the thing that, that, that we will want with the next hire is, you know, we're a club that, wants to be, you know, you turn on the TV and you're like, it's Atlanta United. Whatever happens today, I'm going to be entertained and it's going to be a fun game to watch. I think that's really the the emphasis. Hey, Darren. Uh, Tom Bogart, the MLSsoccer.com. Thanks for doing this. Just you know, a couple here. Um, you know, first of all, why now to make the change? You know, what made this situation untenable at this moment? And, you know, what can you tell us about the timeline about, um, you know, the coaching search and, and the next coach passed, you know, we're going to take our time and, and get. Yeah. Thanks Tom. I think, look, uh, I'm not sure it's about untenable. And I think, look, I can only speak to Atlanta United and uh, you know, our club and the decision we made, you know, for us, it's, uh, and it goes back to the, the quote that, you know, forgive me for waxing uh, eloquent at the start, but, but the reality is, you know, we have a high bar, and so for me and for the club, it was, look, if the direction of travel and we feel we're not going in the route and, and the way and the high expectations we have, you know, let's make the change. Let's make the tough decision. Let's not just keep hanging on and keep hoping and um, accept a mediocrity. We've got to like make that decision. And I think, you know, so for us, you know, it was a case of let's make the change now. We also had in, you know, Stephen and the interim coaching squad, you know, a safe pair of hands that I spoke of that I feel can can help us get the best out of the squad whilst we take that that time to do the search for the permanent hire. 
But I also think, you know, we have this time period now. You know, let's not forget we're in the playoff spots where we stand. We've only had five regular season games. You know, I'm not sure exactly in terms of, of where we're going to be on the, the back half of the season. Um, the Athletic, I know we've got Felipe on here, the Athletic's report in 18 games. They're usually pretty good on knowing what's happening with MLS. So, you know, let's say it's somewhere in that region. Um, you know, we've got over 75% of the season still to go. So, you know, I want to be clear as well. This isn't a right this season off by any means. This is a decision made because it gives us the best chance now for this season. You know, we've got a great squad of players um, and we, you know, fully expect to make the playoffs and be competing for trophies this season. This isn't a buy. This isn't a pandemic. You know, we're going to just wait this one out and wait till, you know, Chelsea's back 100% fit in 21 and we're ready to go. You know, this is about doing what's right now, both for the short term, but also for the medium and long term. Darren, Darren, you have... Alison, you... go ahead. Sorry. Oh, okay. Go um, when, in the search, what are the qualities that you are looking for in a head coach? And also, I know you're not giving us a timeline, but I mean, are you hoping to find a new head coach this season or could it possibly be next season? And is Stephen Glass even in the possibility of being the new head coach? Yeah, hi, Alton. Yeah, look, I mean, I think, um, look, we've got the interim coaching staff in place with Stephen. He's the USL. The plan is he's interim while we do the search and then he'll go back to our USL team. You know, the USL team is an important part of our pipeline. You know, I think um, I, I mentioned it earlier on one of Felipe's questions. You know, the reality is we need to be having a pipeline of talent coming through, particularly in a salary cap um, environment that we're in. Um, you know, we're excited. You know, George has had, George Bellows had his his injuries in the past, but, you know, he's, he's pushing in that first team spot. So, uh, you know, we've got George Campbell as part of the, part of the squad, uh, Tyler Wolf's uh, son of Josh Wolf, local lad, has just joined, um, you know, the first team squad. So we're excited about the future. That's really important. So, you know, for us, Stephen's in there as that interim basis while we, we do the hire, but it'd be really difficult. You know, the one thing we've learned in this pandemic is, you know, it changes every day. So, you know, we want to carry out a search, get the right person. And I'll be genuinely honest with you. I'm not sure how long it's going to take just because of the circumstances that we're in um because of the pandemic but we want to make sure we get it right hey, got time for about a, two more a follow-up on some of that are you at all uh concerned that coming to a mutual agreement with a coach who won two trophies who just went through a three-game slump in the season is going to make the process of finding the next coach maybe a little bit more difficult than had it been a situation like tatas for example no, Doug, I don't think so. And I think, look, um, I mean, a couple of things, I think, you know, it was a mutual part in a lot of ways. I think we were incredibly supportive throughout the, the time frame. I think we're a massive club in North America. I think we're a really, uh, you know, this is a club with, like I said, I mean, think about it, a top 20 fan base, the most amazing stadium, a training ground to die for, you know, a squad of players that is, you know, as good as any in the league. Um, we have the sort of resources. And so I think it's an attractive job in, in that regard. Um, I think MLS is on the growth, you know, from year to year, it gets bigger and bigger. I think, you know, ironically, uh, and it's sort of going on a bit of a sidetrack, but, you know, this pandemic's hitting world football. I think, you know, MLS will come out of it stronger relative to, to other leagues. So, you know, really excited on the macro level for the league, uh, 2026 with the World Cup coming to North America. So, so many of those sort of um, positive things happening with the league and Atlanta United being one of the top clubs in, in MLS, I think it makes it an attractive role. And look, uh, it isn't anything like Europe here. You know, normally, you know, you look at what it is, the sort of average tenor in, in Europe, it's a heck of a lot shorter. Darren, hey, um, Darren last one here. People have been calling for Dan Quinn's head for years now, and Arthur Blank is not a guy who has a quick trigger. Did it take some convincing of him? And how involved will he be with the next search and putting a stamp on it? Now, look, with, um, with Arthur, like all major decisions affecting the club, you know, we had a chat and, and discussed it, and Arthur's fully supportive of, you know, you know what Avanti Eyes wants to do, you know, myself as president of the club. Um, and look, I think, you know, everything's about the – the circumstances that you are dealing with. Um, and, you know, 
we were dealing with Atlanta United with our particular circumstances uh, and the chat we had and you know when we sat down myself and Frank had that talk you know there was a mutual agreement that parting the ways was the best route for everybody um, you know and that's really all I can comment on because that's the you know that's the facts that I have.